So <laughs> six years later, you guys come together and you guys. He yeah, so we worked together. Yeah. We knew each other for a few years and we started working together on this other company. Um, then we both, you know, we, we had some money in our pocket for the first time. We were kind of late 20s. Um, and we did what any knuckleheads like us would do. We went to a lot of Yankees games and we started playing Halo a lot. And we Sundance lived um, in at night. We were going out because we didn't have jobs. We didn't have to wake up. So it, in New York City, you can go out till four in the morning every night of the week, any day of the year. So you um, did. We, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so we did. Yeah. Uh, and and actually, one of the clubs that we would go to a lot was under a bridge in Chinatown, and it was called Fun. And the VIP room was up up a tall flight, like a flight and a, half, a story and a half up in the air over the bar and the dance floor. And the owner had set up a PlayStation with a projector and we used to play Tekken mm -hmm. in the VIP room that was um, projected across the dance floor onto the wall on the other side of the dance floor. So yeah. like all these cool New York people would be partying at this underground club and hot girls dancing and everything like that. And the two of us idiots were sitting there playing Tekken in the VIP room. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then we would go back to Sundance's apartment, um, which was nearby in Tribeca. And he had um, a couple of roommates and a couple of people that lived down the hall who were like young investment bankers and um, finance bros, as we call them in New York City. And we would kind of hustle them in Halo games. So we bet on, you know, we invite people over, bet on Halo matches, 2v2s and 4v4s. Yeah. And we would throw a couple of games to let these guys think they were Sandbag good. Sandbag them. And take all their money <laughs> yeah uh we were doing that we were going to yankees games um and it was a great summer it was a, it was a first summer i think since i was like 13 that i didn't have to work all summer so that was really good and didn't have a job and yep. you know had enough to pay the rent and then probably by like late august uh as baseball season was sort of starting to wrap up i looked at sundays and i was like you know we made like take the summer off money, not retire at 28 money. Yeah. So either we got to get jobs, which neither of us are very good at, or, um, you know, we should figure out something to do. And, and it was conversation literally we were having while sitting at Yankee stadium or playing halo that kind of led to the initial concept for our MLG. And how, how, how did that like the, so it, you had well, to have known that there was competition somewhere, right? Like it was, it, it wasn't, yeah. Like we were well we were competing right and and keep in mind our whole world of growing up as 80s kids was um you know arcades and atari yep. and gaming as a sort of solitary thing it was always social because you're playing with other people around even mm -hmm. if you're at the arcade but you're playing against the, the game not against somebody else and so when i was in college was the first time i started playing things like doom and then quake um, I was not hardcore into it at all. It was just sort of fun because I played games. I was probably playing a lot more Sega hockey than any of those games. Mm -hmm. Sun Sundance too. We went to different colleges. But um, when we met afterwards, actually, I didn't say this, but when I walked into the party at the Chelsea Hotel, there was a guy sitting on a couch with pink hair, hair and a bunch of earrings playing Tekken. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe it was Mortal Kombat. I forget what it was. But it was some, some guy Fighting playing a game. game. All these other cool people were like artsy people, you know, there's a guy playing guitar in the corner and, and all these cool people talking about cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and one guy sitting by himself on a couch playing a video game. So, I, of course, after I said hi to everybody, I just walked over and I was like, you got other sticks? Yeah. <laughs> so that was it. And then and then um, we, you know, because we were competing and we said, hey, maybe we should think about trying to get into the video game industry. We should start a business in that, but I don't want to make a game. That's really hard. And we don't have any idea how to do that. Yeah. Um, and it's hit driven. It's not a great business. Um, I don't really, there is, there was nobody at the time. There was no video game industry in New York at the time. Really the, the um, rockstar guys were just starting GTA. Um, so they existed, but that was really it. We didn't really want to go in that part of the business. We didn't want to sell video games. Um, so we thought like, is there a way to, create a business out of this competition right yeah. versus us just going around trying to hustle people and the, the one thing that we did is we as we thought we were hot shit and getting better competitively we went online and that was before xbox live but you you know the xbox originally had a ethernet port in it so yeah. you're able to like trick it into you just pt top tunneling software to kind of trick it into think i think it's called xbox connect and there's a couple of these things games by some mm -hmm. others and you could sort of play online. And so we started to play with people online and then we went in message boards and we realized 
you know, there's already competitions happening and tournaments and that, but they were like very small like colleges and stuff like that. So we started talking to a bunch of these kids online. We found out there was this crew of unbelievable players from uh, like Texas and Kansas. And um, they were uh, the original sort of dream team of esports in America. It was Dark Man. I don't know if you remember him. He was like the greatest Halo player of all time. Darkman, Zios, Alex, and Shiz, mm-hmm. those are the guys. Um, so they happened to be, uh, we, we reached out and a bunch of people told, them, told us they were the best in the world. We started talking to them. They happened to be coming to a tournament that be, was being run at, in like the basement of a Holiday Inn near Atlantic City. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we tried to find the guys that were running the tournament. We did. They invited us to come down. We went down. We met with the team. We saw the tournament. And it was really those old school days where everybody brought their own TV and their own Xbox and just threw like 50 bucks into a pool. Mm -hmm. And then the organizers put it together. Uh, The organizer of that tournament was John Nelson, also known as Anakin, who eventually became the head of league operations at MLG and is now the commissioner of Apex at EA. Um. So we went down there, uh, met the team, and we, it was Sundance and I, so we rented a limo. We had a limo driver drive us down there. Oh, of course. <laughs> Picked up these guys. We brought them back, you know, from North Texas and Kansas, and we brought them back uh, to New York City. And I don't think they'd ever seen a building more than four stories high. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, took them out for steaks and we were like, Hey, you know, we're not sure what we're going to do here, but you know, you guys seem great. We, we love this whole competition. We think we can turn it into a sport. Why don't we, why don't we be your managers? Okay. So we signed management deals with them. I got them a sponsor of some backpack company that was trying to create backpacks for, for gamers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we started to realize we could, you know, we should actually run these tournaments because, there was no funding behind it. There was no sort of, it was just sort of one-off kind of things. Uh, so then I started studying um, business models for how sports leagues started. And the closest one looked like NASCAR because it was a situation where um, the France family, Big Bill France really started NASCAR. He, there was dirt tracks all over the Southeast and people would just drive their, their souped up regular cars. That's why it's called stock car racing. They would drive their regular cars up to these tracks. The tracks all had different rules. The owners were separate. There was no real league or anything like that. So Big Bill went around to all of these track owners and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make more money for all of us by organizing this into a, a circuit. I'll sell sponsorships and then media rights, and we're all going to make a lot of money. But so you guys, you, guys, you guys were already talking about media rights in 2005, Two. 2002? Yeah. Jesus. Okay. I was 22. I was still <laughs> at Washington Mutual or Long Beach Mortgage, uh, yeah. closing mortgages out. And this thing that I would eventually be a big part of had already started. All right. Yeah. So, so go on. <laughs> I just want to put it. I just want to put it into perspective that even though you're somewhere, somebody out there is already building something that you're going to benefit from, which is why it's always super important to make sure that you pay dues. Uh, pay, pay your respects at least, right? Where 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 they do. Um, so you know, while while I have you, thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> sure. All right.